one of the first things I do when I get out of my house in Star Wars Galaxies is essentially check for rebels. And right now there are zero rebels in the area. This game really does give you a sense of what it means to have a galactic civil war. I also check my mail to make sure that the Empire isn't going to be uh, repossessing my house and not letting me inside until I do a peggy thing. So, essentially, I'm going to give you a little bit of a house tour really quick, and then I'm going to be heading out. And we're going to be going on a nice little speeder bike run, because that's the other thing that I do is I just drive, fly, or whatever, because there's so much in Star Wars Galaxies to do. And let's see how much I put in here. Okay, that should be enough for December. Which means that I will probably need to pay the Empire again pretty soon. Now let's see, it's going to tell me the exact status here. Ah, 30 days. 38 days. So when did I do this? Uh, yeah, no. I need to go pay the Empire again. Whoops, I miscalculated. Alrighty, and the other thing... Ah, I hit a rock again. I'm glad that they didn't record damage like that back in the day. I hit a rock twice when I was driving the speeder bike. And, like I said, we're going on a little speeder bike run right here. So, essentially... Ooh, that one was a close call. Essentially, I like to zoom in, and they, back then, in 2002, 2003... There's the rock I hit. 2003 also essentially decided, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you could ride all these vehicles that we have in Star Wars in first person? And this was technically first person back then. Having an... an um, yeah, uh, if you get motion sick. I don't get motion sick. So I probably need to put a motion sickness warning every single time I do the speeder bike because these things go fast and I make a lot of curves. You can see a lot of structures in the distance as well as the natural rock formations as well. And those are the types of things that Although you may have seen the movies, you wouldn't necessarily be able to see this type of experience from really anything. And you still technically can't get this type of experience anywhere except for places that simulate Star Wars galaxies. And there's the town in the distance. I live near Mos Espa, and that is Mos Espa. Oh my goodness, what a joy. Having... A perfectly timed rebel flyover. It's half and half right now, frickin' Tatooine. So, I do believe that this is where I have to blast my way into the starport. So here we go. And it is quite the journey, which is why I took away my speeder bike from them because they would blow it up and I don't want to lose my speeder bike. I haven't lost a speeder bike yet to damage, except for old age. And you, you, you just ignore that rebel popping in there. That happens because technically when you're in range, the game, if it was actually able to be redesigned in a modern way, they would be able to show all of the activity in near real time as opposed to oh oh oh, oh I, I, I gotta update i gotta update hold on hold on oh and that's what that looks like from our perspective is that sudden pop in of that rebel that didn't appear to be there before but technically that rebel was actually there before No, I lost rebel points. How sad. Uh -huh. He's behind a wall. So, that is why it says can't see targets being spammed repeatedly because my macro is active. So here's what I'm going to do because I can't see him. I know he can't see me either. So I am going to retreat because... <gasps> Look at my health. 
to look at my health? That's what I did. I was so engaged in the battle that I forgot to look at my health. So, when that happens, you just kind of... It's the equivalent of taking a rest, you're exhausted, you don't want to just overexert yourself. And I also check my inventory. And, in the process of checking my inventory, I quote-unquote buff myself. For those video game players, you'll know what that means. But for those non-video game players, that just basically means an enhancement to your statistics or otherwise abilities. In this case, the... Ad I'm gonna leave that in. In this case, the enhancement that I was talking about would be... Um, uh, let's say, uh, the ability to get recovered faster. So, health, stamina, everything like that. There's no magic in this game, which is interesting, because Star Wars does actually have magic, technically, but it's not really talked about as much, because it's really overpowered by the obvious thing of the Force. But there's still magic in Star Wars, which is interesting. They have magicians, wizards, and everything, otherwise... The thing that Owen Lars said on Tatooine, that wizard's just a crazy old man. That's, it's, it's, it's a term throughout the galaxy. Even the Star Wars galaxy. They have magic. Which is weird. Alright, time to go back to the Rebels, because in the process of the reason why I can't see him, he's in the wall, over there, he's not. He's actually over there. That's the original position that the Rebel moved to that I couldn't quote-unquote see target from. I was facing away from this direction, so obviously I couldn't see the Rebel there. That's why I registered it there. But from the original player's perspective, you did not get the update yet that the Rebel was over here. So when the Rebel is over here and you're facing the right direction... Pew pew! Also, there's an easy way to tell when I'm doing Traylon mode versus myself. You'll be able to hear no background noise, well, relatively speaking, and it won't be in-game sound effects. When I have in-game sound effects, it'll be like Traylon has a little microphone attached to him and he's telling the story, sort of. This is just, eh, it's a way to differentiate, but also, it's really, really fun, because I get to do things that I don't normally get to do as myself, and they're in the perspective of this foreign alien. It's interesting in Star Wars Galaxy, though, that there aren't more Zabrak. But this is the species that Darth Maul was in Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. And they have been around since at least 1999, when The Phantom Menace came out. People are like, oh, man. What if we just... And then it happened. But also, George Lucas was the type of person that said, Hey, you know, I, I made this just so you could, you know, uh, have fun with it. But uh, there's there's these little, still a little bit of rules you have to follow, but other than that, I'd say just go wild. And that's what they fucking did. They went wild. So... Star Wars Galaxies happened about three years after that, and at that time, they had to deal with the Star Wars. A New Hope was not a title for the Star Wars until later, so they had to deal with the Star Wars. I think 1997 was when they added A New Hope, and then there was The Empire Strikes Back followed by Return of the Jedi. And then there was approximately a few decades of cartoons, like, I don't, video gaming wasn't really much of a thing as much with these types of things back in the 80s and 90s. But they did so much media. And then, then, they said, hmm, well, that industrial light and magic of ours is getting pretty dang good. You think we could do a movie using computer animation? 
Gasp. Frickin' turn of the century stuff, my guys. Like, it's really, I mean, I guess you've also experienced it too, if you just kinda never really got to experience fully computer animated movies. Because back when you were a child, not everything was computer animated and it was hand drawn. Man, this. This combat is taking a long time. See, this is why when you're an Imperial on Tatooine, Imperial Tatooine, and there's a rebel incursion, it's important. So, technically by doing this, this also isn't really a way of lowering the factional composition of the rebels because it's all percentage based. If I were to stay here for essentially a long time, let's say a few days, and do this, it would actually make a difference because the level of these rebels is also close to the level of the Imperials on the planet. So when it's 50-50 like this, it's actually a challenge to get through these places at the lower levels if you're an active factional combatant. Oh, rest in peace, thug. But I like how in this you can pretend like the thug is just looking the other way because, oh my gosh, this thug is literally not in the path of our blaster shots. And I also intentionally don't put them in the path of the blaster shots in case I fire off a accidental multi-target attack. Oh, rest in rebel. And there it is, the finishing blow right near the thug. Huh. What is that? Is that a... That's not a tauntaun, is it? Eh. Yeah. Of course, everybody carries credits on him. That's the thing. And also, I forgot that I had 7 to 10, so I can just <gasps> send it to the ether. And that is the daily reward for... Hey, thanks for coming back to Star Wars Galaxies after 20 years. Our version. There's, like, multiple versions of Star Wars Galaxies. This is Star Wars Galaxies Restoration. Well... I guess you can be even more specific. Restoration 3. And I've also almost cleared all the rebels to my path. I need to go... Oh, hey there, Indusania. Indusina. That was a person that, at the time, they saw me doing this. If they were actually active and weren't AFK away from keyboard. Just all of a sudden they'd hear blaster bolts and they'd see a rebel just running away. And then they'd probably look and see that there's an actual combat going on near them between an Imperial and a Rebel. But I don't actually look like an Imperial too much right now. I have on white on top, white on bottom, and black in center. Stormtroopers are typically white. All white armor, I mean. Gotta be careful, it's 2024, wink wink, nudge nudge. So let's see here. Yep, three, two, one, dead. All right, now let's see what they got. And after that, I will finally be able to leave this rebel-infested Tatooine and get to hopefully a more Imperial-friendly area. Most people, I guess, they see the Rebel Alliance as quote-unquote good guys, but that's not really true. They do things just as bad as the Empire does, just not as much, and not as on a widespread scale. I would say that both factions use indoctrination to their advantage, whether they want to admit it or not. The Empire, at the very least, has a better excuse than the Rebel Alliance when they indoctrinate people. Oh, yeah, here we go. Final bout of rebels before we get off of this planet. Sand Hell, Tatooine. Oh, 
also, I'm technically being more friendly to these rebels than I normally would be to all the other targets. I'm not blinding them and paralyzing them like I do the rest of the things that I usually shoot my blaster rifles or blaster pushers at. I do still do that. Hey, hey, you get one final warning shot, disengage, at least with that. But they did not disengage, so. Oh, ah, while I have time. The housing thing that you just saw there, that's part of the crafting system in this game to where everything that's a structure that essentially is not already placed and is of a certain style can be built by players. The obvious exceptions to this are things like, well actually no, because they changed that, never mind. Basically, players can do the thing that the devs back in the 2000s did and build their own cities. And they will build their own cities. Physically place the locations with, I'm going to go here, this is where it's going to be, I'm going to move my cursor mouse hand thingy around, and boop, place, there it is. That's one building. If you have a 50-person guild, a 50-person town, you're gonna need 50 buildings. That's gonna show up on the map. And that's gonna show up, well, you have to register it too, but that's gonna show up on the map and it's going to show up in the distance similar to how Mas Espa pos Ma wow. Mas Espa popped. That's gonna be a tongue twister. Mas Espa popped up in the distance. And there's a reason why things pop in here, and that's because it's the way the game loads. It's similar to how, if you've ever played games like Cruisin' USA or other similar two-dimensional, but really three-dimensional, but really two-dimensional sprite games that have a scrolling background, it's sort of like that, but it's three-dimensional fully, and they just come in as they go. I don't know the exact distance for the pop-in, but that's one of the things that is the reason why cities and every other structure every other thing just sort of suddenly appears and if you get a certain distance away it disappears and here we go rest and relaxation we're finally in the starport so i can get off tatooine and i still have my starter ship this is the starter ship that if you do the pilot quests is just given to you eh, that's a thing rpg thing hey 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 and now we're in space what? Oh my gosh, this blew our freaking minds and it actually wasn't from the default game. This was an expansion. It was called the Jump to Lightspeed expansion and that happened about 2005-ish? Followed shortly by, after the release of Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, Rage of the Wookiees, as well as an expansion that took us to Mustafar. And the Rage of the Wookiees expansion took us to Kashyyyk, which appears on this planet list here that you saw. Alright, it's hyperspace time. Three, two, one. Mm. And damn it, my cursor was in the way. Oh well. And here's the hyperspace I lit. And the, that was me configuring the sensitivity of my mouse, since I'm not using the joystick to fly yet. So that's a Rebel Space Station. Um, it obviously looks more not square than an Imperial Station. And here, this. This is why I stopped doing everything I was doing once I saw this. This is what space combat looks like 
from the perspective of somebody that just came off of the planet, and that's a rebel ship and an imperial ship in the background. All of those lasers are hitting shields, and as soon as we get close enough, you'll start to see why I got so excited to get closer. Oh, there's going to be sound effects too, so if you have headphones on, or if you have a really good sound system, this is going to be a very interesting experience. Can you tell what ship's the MP ship? Can you tell what ship's the MP ship compared to the rebel ship? Oh, Empire. Oh, there's another Seek Fighter. And that one is... Oh, they're fighting each other. The Black Suns and the Binaries. This is a gang war in space! And another gang war in space with the rebels and the Imperials. So there's two simultaneous gang wars going on right now. Yeah. That was almost a hit. Thankfully, they don't register collision damage. It just makes the uh, explosion noise. And if this ship was already disabled by somebody else, hmm. Yeah, that's why I'm like, you know what? You know what? You were already disabled by somebody else. I'm not gonna. Lose. actually dangerous. It doesn't matter if you're a rebel or imperial. If you get near those turbo lasers and you get hit, you are fried. This is a tier 1 ship. These are tiers 5, tiers 2, and tiers 6. So, if you get even one shot as a level 1, quote-unquote, a tier 1, quote-unquote, you are going down. This is why when I do this combat right here, that's how fast I go down in one shot with these other turbo lasers. But these Seeks are on the same level as me. I've only just slightly upgraded my weapons and shield and engine and capacitor. Ooh, that was a TIE Fighter. I don't even have to hear it to know that I just saw the Imperial TIE Fighter sound. Or that. Imperial TIE Fighter design. Because that wing shape is an H. It looks like a freaking eye beam in space. Squished down. Ah! See? They can move really fast. I do get hit in this, by the way. And also, I trolled the Rebel Alliance a little bit. Look at this. This is what the perspective of I can't shake him looks like from the outside. When this Rebel sees me doing this, quote-unquote, I haven't actively engaged them enough yet because I haven't hit them enough yet. But once I get them in my target lock, they're just like, what, 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 what's going on? Why, why, why is this one following me? They don't actually do that in game, but essentially that's what the logic behind their behavior is once you start doing certain things. They're also having to dodge the Empire that's also doing the same thing as me, but I don't technically have a faction. I'm sort of neutral. I can either attack the Empire or the Rebellion in space. 
but I wanted to do something silly. And I also had to, while simultaneously dodging this rebel, dodge turbo laser fire. And there it is! There is my first turbo laser fire hit. There's my second turbo laser fire hit. Let's have fun with the X-Wing again. There's the Tier 7, which means that one shot from this X-Wing will take out approximately 50 to 75% of my shield. Now I've become an active combatant because the Rebels and I have both gotten away from the active range of the turbo lasers, and now they're wondering what in the heck is going on with this seat fighter. Is he another binary? Is he another black sun? Nah. That's just me doing the wrong thing. Trolling the rebellion a little bit. Trolling the empire a little bit. Both sides are ridiculous. Ooh, that was a close call. Nice maneuvering. But this rebel is not going to shake me that easily because there it is. There is one of the ones that is I was waiting for. That is a major target lock. Because now, now, what, what he has to do, or she, or it, I don't know, there could be a freaking alien with a multiple, multiple whatever. You know, this is Star Wars. Actual Star Wars back then was that way too, by the way. Alrighty, I think this is where I actually disengage and there, oh, there was another TIE advanced over there or a TIE bomber, I can't tell from that angle. Uh, and I didn't scan it either. I think that was a bomber. And there it is. There was my final turbo laser hit and it took out 90% of my, no? No, there it is. It took out 80% of my shields. And it also damaged my capacitor, my shields, and my engine. It instantly took out my capacitor. It instantly reduced the speed at which I can fly. And that's why I'm retreating. So I bid you all adieu. That was a fun combat. I did not expect it. It was 100% natural. It happens not all the time, but it happens enough that depending on where you go, this sort of thing can happen to you anywhere. And on the ground below... <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot about that! Oh my gosh! Wow, somebody just crashed into an asteroid. Alright, see you later. I'm not gonna talk all the way through the journey to the space station. Bye-bye. This has been Extreme Tuber Symphony.